Right One Penitential Order begins on page 319. Page 319. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Your word, our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful to us. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like all sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their Restore thou those who are penitent, according to the promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant to those merciful Father for his sake, that we may be after the godly, righteous, and soul of life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of your sins, true repentance, amendment of life the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. And with with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you're able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, 
a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Let us say responsively by half verse the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 27, as in your bulletin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, though an army should encamp against me, and though war should rise up against me, one thing I have asked of the Lord, one thing I seek. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord, for in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. Even now he lifts my head. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord.
Pharisees came and said to, said to Jesus, Get away from here. For Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures. Today and tomorrow and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must go my own way. Because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. <coughs> How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you are not going. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Their minds are set on earthly things. Speak these words in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, good morning on this second Sunday of Lent. Time change Sunday, and it just so happens to be Antarctica outside. Um, and and it, if it feels like it's getting a little warmer, it is getting a little warmer. The, uh, the time change definitely threw off the uh, boiler and, and the compressor and everything else. So, um, apologies that it was a little chilly this morning. Uh, we, are, we are warming it up. I think uh, yesterday we were in here and somebody sent a text message saying it was 68 degrees and holding. That was the kiss of death. <laughs> uh, but we're back up. We're back up. So, Paul's letter to the Philippians we have today is probably one of my favorite letters. It's a wonderful letter, and some might even call it a love letter. Biblical theologians call it a love letter to the church. And of course, as a priest, I find it a little ironic that the most loving letter St. Paul writes, he writes from jail when he separated from his parishioners. <laughs> Anytime he was with them, he wasn't so loving. Uh, but Paul's letter to the Philippians is a great study for Lent. If you're still looking for a Lenten discipline, that's okay. Take on the letter to the Philippians. It is one of the shortest books in the Bible at only four chapters, a whopping four chapters. You can read it in one sitting, and in the season of Lent, you could read it over and over again as a study. Now, when I was a student at Yale Divinity School, a number of my classmates were going on to get doctorate degrees, and let's just say there was a lot of fierce competition in the classroom. And I remember taking a class once on the philosopher George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, and I remember this humbling moment when I looked around the classroom and I was the only person not reading Hegel in German. Yeah. You, you want to know where my papers were on that bell curve? On the very bottom. And so, when Yale Divinity offered a class on Philippians four chapters on Philippians, I was like, thank God, <laughs> they're, they're, they're offering a course that I can do. Uh, this, is, this is a course geared for somebody like me. You know, it was like, it was like taking basket weaving with Moses or, or, or tent making with Paul or snake handling on Malta. You know, those are the courses that I needed to take. And so I signed up on this four chapters of Philippians course thinking it was a way to boost my GPA. Yeah, but like everything else in classroom, I soon realized that this little letter is rich in spirituality and exceptionally deep in theology. And once again, it seems to be a pattern. I was well over my head. 
So in today's epistle, Paul talks about these people. He talks about these people whose God is their belly, and their glory is in their shame, and their end is destruction. And this is because, he says, their minds are set on earthly things. And in this season of Lent, we are reminded that Paul might very well be talking about us, you and I. Because we often live by letting our passions lead the way. That's the God of the belly. We often live lives focusing on ourselves and our own self-glorification. That typically leads to our shame. And in essence, our lives are driven by what is best for us. Because our minds are set on earthly things. Now this is a sharp contrast to what Paul describes in the second chapter of Philippians. You get only four chapters. So if you go to the second chapter of Philippians, he writes probably some of his famous words. Theologians even think that they aren't his words, that they predate him. He writes in chapter 2, verse 5, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and being found in human form, humbled himself to the point of obedience on a cross. Philippians 2, 5 through 12. Everybody should know that. Paul says that we are to have the same mind the same mind that was in Christ Jesus and what does that look like it means empty him yourself taking the form of a servant but it also means humbling yourself it's very very different than having your mind set on earthly things so chapter 3 It's talking about having your mind set on earthly things, but if you go back to chapter 2, he's talking about having our minds set on the mind of Christ. He makes that distinction. So how do we get how do we get from having our minds set on earthly things to having the same mind of Christ? How do we make that transition in our lives? Well, Paul introduces a word in today's epistle. A word the Romans would have certainly understood. A word that perhaps you and I can understand. And it's the concept of citizenship. Citizenship. There are requirements and expectations for living as a citizen. For becoming a citizen. And Paul takes this idea of citizenship and applies it to a life of faith. Now, if you were to go back to chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, in verse 27, Paul writes this. He says, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. He says, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. You've heard that verse before. But the NRSV doesn't do the best job in translating that. Because the Greek word is actually where we get the word politic, which means citizen. So a better way to translate 127 would be to live your life as a citizen of Christ. And I think that's pretty important because if you look at today's epistle, he connects that idea of citizenship from the beginning of the letter to where we are today. Our citizenship, he says in today's epistle, our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. So the way in which we distinguish ourselves from the people of this world, Paul saying, whose minds are set on earthly things, is to remember that we, Christians, are citizens 
of another world, of another kingdom. And as Christians, we are about something larger than ourselves. It's not just about us. As Christians, we are to be called to be in this world, yet not of the world. Because we are citizens of heaven. So my homily today on this time change where we're all dragging a little is to return to those words that we heard on Ash Wednesday. Return to those words of self-examination when we're invited into Lent as a season of self-examination, of examining your life, and to see what you are serving, who you are serving. Are you serving yourself? Or are you serving something larger than yourself? Are our lives bearing witness to the values of this world? Or the values of another world? of being a citizen of Christ. One of my favorite theologians is Stanley Hierwas. Liberals think he's too conservative, and conservatives think he's too liberal. That's why I love him. (laughs) Nobody likes him. And he says, Stanley Hierwas says that Christians should strive to see themselves as resident aliens. As resident aliens. People who live in this world, but who are from another place. Citizens of another world, he says, transforming this world. Because when we live like that, when we live like that, our prayer, Jesus' prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us, actually becomes a reality. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Live as citizens of heaven so thy kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Turning to page 326, let us join with Christians across time and around the world in the nice and free. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. But by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thine, thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, rightly and duly administering thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those on our prayer list and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Thomas and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning, a special welcome to anybody who might be visiting with us this morning. I will be at the back of the church greeting you on the way out and look forward to saying hello um, and connecting you with this, with this wonderful parish. Again, thank you for your patience as the heat has now come back on. And, and again, thank you, Buzzy, for, for the ways in which you do cartwheels for this old historic building. Um, it is it is it's, it's very great to have that, um, to have you and, and others that are make this make this facility work. A um, couple of things, a couple of announcements I want to direct your attention toward uh, in the back of the leaflet. Um, first of all, this week, the calendar this week, Tuesday we continue to have our Bible studies at 4.30. Wednesday, Father Beekner will, will persevere through Dante. I think he is getting into uh, Purgatorio this week, right? He's finally left hell and entered into Purgatory. Um, and so maybe that coincided with his 70th birthday, so you need to wish him a happy birthday this week. So maybe he's, he's moved into Purgatory. Um, so come bring your book to that class but, and uh, be a part of that. It's a great series. I'll continue with uh, uh, kind of a Lenten series during our chapel service on, on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock. This week I will talk about centering prayer. Um, centering prayer is a type of way to, prayer, to pray without words. I struggle with that, but it's a, it's a very powerful form of prayer. And I encourage you uh, to come to that service and learn more about that. And then... The other thing you'll notice on the bottom of this leaflet is Nancy Benson's retirement party. We have a date. We have a date for Nancy's retirement party, so please, please put that in your calendar for May the 14th. We'll be celebrating Nancy after 34 years um, of, of amazing ministry here. She is stepping down. The uh, You'll also see in this leaflet the 
ways to support those in Ukraine. The Episcopal Relief and Development does a lot of phenomenal work. You are, if you're Episcopalian, you're familiar with ERD. It's what's called ERD. They're doing tremendous work helping those that are impacted by the, by the war in Ukraine. Continue to keep them in your prayers. Continue to keep the leaders in your prayers. I encourage you to do that. And if you feel so moved to support this um, outreach, ERD does a phenomenal job. Uh, there's ways to do that on the sheet. There's also ways, I think, in our weekly email, you can connect uh, to ERD and make a contribution online, if that's, if that's what works for you. Um, Connie had an announcement. Yes, as you notice, there are no big boards up. They are in the library. They are to be polished. So we need hands, people to help polish the big boards. They have been done for several years, and they weigh a ton, so they don't really get done for several years. So anyway, um, I am available to help polish. I mean, I'd like to make things look bright and shiny. Believe me, they are going to pop when we get done. Um, and it's going to take many hands, several hours. I don't exaggerate. Um, but if you can, please let me know. Thank you, Connie. Uh, Connie and her team continue to do amazing work. As you will see, the hymn boards came off because the wall is no longer red. We've taken the wall, the vestry took the wall back to um, its original original kind of color. So this is, this is the way the first place did good work on that. Um, before the 1980s, so there's a, you saw in the newsletter, 1920s, the building, the building did look this color. So, um, Thank you for, for their work on that. And, and Sammy was here painting, and I've never prayed so hard. Yeah, I did the ladders just uh, too much um, to watch him up there painting that, that section up there. But he did a great job. And um, so on the building, we, we, we're doing a number of things on the building, and we continue to do a number of things on the building. I know Anna and Gail have sent out some emails about this, this garden and our front entrance to try to beautify that, that space. So um, we are in Lent, penitential order. Some Lenten hymns. Sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, but we're we're anticipating the season of resurrection, and, and and so there's already a little light in here. And pretty soon, once this winter passes, we'll have some flowers and some amazing stuff in the garden. So we are we are working that way. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to the Most High.
Prayer 1 begins on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who does bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood in the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, 
mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here, we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our own manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve that body and soul in our lives. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is to be. Preserve that body and soul in our lives. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is to be. Preserve that body and soul in our lives. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is to be. Preserve that body and soul in our lives.
Turning to page 339, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of your hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world of the Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always.